the most local news on TV. News for New England. Good evening, I'm Casey Kaufman. Hope you enjoyed today because tomorrow will be a whole lot different. The final day of March will bring us a major snowstorm and it will continue into Tuesday for the first day of April, April Fool's Day. Barry Burbank is in the weather office tracking a major weather maker headed our way. Bear, this isn't any April Fool's joke, is it? Not at all, Casey. I believe there will be shoveling out here in many areas on Tuesday morning, April 1st, as a huge storm gets organized. Look at these temperatures from our school weather net locations with all that nice sunshine. It's hard to believe that we're going to pull a switcheroo on you and have spring today, winter by Tuesday morning on April 1st. Quite a coincidence, April Fool's Day. All signs suggest this is really going to evolve into a monstrous storm in the next 24 hours. Massive intensification of this thing. By late tomorrow, it'll be a, a mega storm. Heavy rain changing to heavy wet snow. Potential for tree damage and power outages. We'll have gales of 30 to 60 miles an hour with possible uh, coastal flooding here on Tuesday morning. You're watching WBZ TV Boston. But this entire area northward is snowfall, and the roads are worse right now from the Massachusetts Turnpike north and northeast. Right in the middle of the snow belt here, you can see behind me here, we had near whiteout conditions uh, in a lot of areas out here in the hills. People were still buying their gardening supplies. They were undaunted, said, nope, I'm going to buy my gardening supplies. I'm going to continue on, hoping that, uh, as Bruce says, the sun comes out later in the week and uh, melts a lot of this away. I'm Bill Shields reporting live from Worcester. Liz Walker, Jack Williams, with the most local news on TV. The big dig out. <laughs> New Englanders cleaning up at this hour from one of the worst snowstorms in history. You can tell your grandchildren you survived the blizzard of 97. Good evening, everybody. I'm Liz Walker. Right now, Route 95, northbound to Route 28, has just reopened. You can see there are plenty of cars that are stuck in that area, but it had been shut down. It has just reopened. Acton, Acton, Foxborough, Algonquin Regional High School, Amesbury, Amherst, New Hampshire, and Dover. As WBZ's Gary LaPierre rattled off school closings throughout New England, visibility was bad and so were the roads. That were this New Hampshire newspaper said it all. Now, I know it's going to be repeated today, but this is a bad April Fool's joke. Uh, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> this has got to be the worst one going. Tomorrow, this New Hampshire golf course was set to open. Instead, golf carts are covered with snow, and the season opener will have to wait. I don't think that'll be happening. No tea times tomorrow? No tea times tomorrow. In the city of Boston, the blizzard of 97 dropped two feet of snow and left thousands of city residents stranded and powerless. Liz, the scene out here looks much better than it did earlier this afternoon. The snow has stopped falling and the main streets are a little bit clearer. But if you take a look down the side streets, we're right here on Spruce Street, you get a much clearer picture of what it actually looks like in most neighborhoods around Boston. Uh, these pictures we're showing you right now are from the south end of Boston and also from over by the Fenway and Kenmore Square. Lots of cars in the side streets uh, just completely covered. You can't tell it's a mound of snow and what is a car. People deciding, I guess, just to wait for the thaw rather than to dig their cars out. Really, what a difference a few hours makes when it seems like residents of this Randolph neighborhood wouldn't be able to dig out from the mounds of snow. Suddenly, driveways and cars are reappearing. Liz, this is where it all got coordinated today, all the emergency responses. There's not many people left now. This is the Red Cross right here coordinating the shelters tonight. But as you mentioned, when Governor Weld was here this afternoon, and when he declared the state of emergency, that gave him the power to spend some extra money to help clean up this storm, and it will be expensive. When it comes to assessing the severity of a snowstorm in New England, there's really only one reliable way to measure it. That means getting the final word from, you know, News 4 Shelby Scott. Shelby came out of retirement today to report on the blizzard and joins us live now from Worcester. Shelby, welcome back. Thank you, Liz. It was uh, one of those storms you just can't miss. You have to get out here. After doing it for 30 years, I couldn't miss this one anyway. But I'll tell you, I have a new best friend in Worcester. I want you to meet Mr. Digout. That's all people have been doing since about 1030 this morning is digging out. But they did it with uh, pretty good humor. This is Mother Nature's work. Ain't nothing we can do about it. But just keep shoving and keep going. And that was it all over the area, trying to find a sidewalk or a driveway. The main roads were in pretty good shape by daylight. But in Hilly Worcester, the side streets were another matter. This is one of the worst ones we have right here. We're waiting for the backhoe to come down and so I can get up. And it doesn't help for other people who are trying to get up these hills, too. You know, before we can, and 
it slows the whole process down. Trying to shovel the moisture-laden white stuff was not easy. Right here in the driveway, so far we've been out here for four and a half hours. Too long for me. Uh, Kids getting a day off from school had some fun this sometimes yeah, at yeah, dad's expense. How about you? This is, this is one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> And fill those bird feeders. Some of the spring flocks are already here, and they need our help until all this stuff melts. And as you can see, Route 9 behind me here is uh, really just wet now, as are most of the main roads in this area. But there's still a lot of side streets, especially the real hilly ones, that are tough going. So if people do have to go out in this area tonight, they really should still use a lot of caution. And it seems to be getting a bit colder. So I'm afraid some, I hope it doesn't get too cold so some of this wetness doesn't ice off because there has been melting since about noon today. But that's a story from Worcester, Joe. Just take a look at these pictures from Situate. The nor'easter whipped up high waves, with battered boats, and caused a minor flooding. The USS Constitution survived the Revolutionary War, but it had a tough battle with the blizzard of 97. Heavy snow and strong winds were too much for old Ironsides. The top of the ship's mast broke off in the storm. The Charlestown Navy Yard people tell us that repairs will be made as soon as possible. Sports with Bob Lobel. News for New England. Well, let's have some good news. It's opening day in a lot of major league cities, and it's a good thing Boston isn't one of them. That was a scene at Fenway Park today. The grounds crew started shoving out. They got plenty of time. The Sox start the season with an eight-game West Coast road trip beginning in Anaheim tomorrow night at 10. The Fenway opener is a week from Friday against the Mariners. We'll be ready. They'll be ready. We'll remember the blizzard of 97 for a long time, but was it a record? Well, not quite. Back in the blizzard of 78, some of us were digging out from under more than 40 inches of snow. And now the blizzard of 97, well, 30 plus inches in some parts. A lot of snow, but not a record. For the record, the blizzard of 97 will go down as the largest April snowstorm in Massachusetts history. It's also the third biggest storm in the history of the Commonwealth.